In today's video, you are going to learn how to analyze OI data. Let me take a minute and explain to you why OI data is analyzing OI data is so very powerful, you know. In the futures market, suppose you want to buy 500, 500 shares of Reliance at say 1550, that's 7.5 lakh, 7 lakh 75,000. You don't have to pay the full 7 lakh 75,000. You have to pay something like one and a half or maybe one lakh seventy five thousand you know so by paying one and a half lakhs or one lakh seventy five thousand you get five times the exposure right now the cash market if you buy 500 shares you have to pay the whole amount you know and the t plus two out here it's very flexible so operators can buy five times four to five times the quantity in the futures market and they can play havoc with the stock stocks in the spot market you know you see what happened to nifty today it was sold in the cash market and there was a big bang uh, red candle and everyone went to short it and these guys started buying from futures i'm going to show it to you okay so if you analyze the oi data and you analyze the oi charts they will help you a lot now remember one thing that in the fno market there's futures and there's options Right now, whatever I'm showing you is related to futures. You're going to learn how to and uh, how to analyze OI data in live market and end of day, right? Let's start. Now you you know what OI uh, open interest is. You know it's just the outstanding positions. Okay, so what happens when the open interest rises? When the open interest rises, it is obvious that the uh, traders are taking home out uh, positions. Correct? <coughs> which is why, which is why the open interest is up, right? Now, along with the open interest, the price also is rising. Suppose the price is rising. What does it mean? It means the traders are taking home positions, and the price is rising, so they are confident of a bullish trend. If the volume also is rising along with the rise in price and open interest, it means there are more traders that are buying the stock, right? And the price will zoom. This is the first interpretation of the open interest, rising open interest, rising price, rising volume, bullish. Outlook is bullish, right? Now, the second interpretation is, you know, when the open interest is rising and the price is falling and the volume is going up, that is, that means the traders are taking home positions, they are shorting the market and they are, in, the OI is going up, that means the shorts are increasing, okay, and the volume also is going up, that means more and more sellers are in the market and I mean, they are trying to satisfy the demand of whoever is buying. And people are buying but the price is coming down because the sellers are selling out. So when the open interest rises and the price falls and the traded volume goes up, the outlook is bearish. Okay, see now since you are learning op open interest, I don't want you to go into too many scenarios. You just be into two or three scenarios. The two scenarios I've explained to you. Now the third scenario is when the open interest is falling, the price is rising. And the traded volume is falling. What does it mean? It means that when the open interest falls, that means whatever positions have been taken home, they are being squared up. Traders either want to book profits or book losses or whatever it is and want to close. You know, it can be for a variety of reasons, for whatever. So when open interest falls, it means the outstanding positions are being squared up. Now, when the open interest falls and the price rises, it means there is some kind of short covering going on. Okay, because people may have shorted earlier and the, the price has started rising. And if the volume is falling, it means when the price is rising and the open interest and volume are falling, it means that the sellers are not, not selling at that price. Okay, so this is a bullish scenario. Now, these are the three scenarios that I want you to be concerned with. Right, I'm going to show you how to trade these on the charts, not today in a different session, but there's something more I want to tell you. There are some rules of analyzing open interest data. Okay. Typically you watch OI live data, 
right because you watching end of day data can be misleading for example if the change in open interest in the morning expressed as a percentage for futures which you already learned is something like 15 percent that means so many 15 percent of outstanding positions have been taken home but at the end of the day is five percent and then you watch the open interest at the end of the day and you conclude that oh yeah five percent has been uh, uh, taken home as an uh, outstanding position and there's a slight rise in price so this must be bullish but you miss out on what happened in the morning you know in the morning it was 15 percent now it is five percent so when you are doing end of day data you always 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 triple check it i'm going to show you how to triple check it it's coming after this okay that's number one i just wanted you to be cautious you know when you look at the end of day data now the type of trade that you enter into that it depends on the type of the market right now we are going we are living in a choppy market today there was something something like 639 uh, advances and 1200 declines and the market shot up 50 points you know it's not natural so it's a choppy market stick to intraday trade if it's a bullish trend like it was you know in 2017 or 2014 i mean the bullish trend comes once in two years or something like that then the data signals hold good for a swing trend perhaps even you know you can i mean the open interest data can clue you on that is going to do very well in the future always apply vwap you already learned vwap fibonacci pivots you already learned but i'm going to show you again well when trading based on oi data analysis and be cautious with end of day analysis i covered that and i gave you the reason as well okay and remember that futures oi data analysis is more powerful than regular ta however when combined with charts it can make a deadly combo you know your success rate uh, success rate in the market will increase dramatically so let me now go let me now go to the charts you know what you do is when you pick a stock in the live market or even at end of day you always go to the previous day and you draw the pivots between the highest and the lowest the lowest points on the 15 minute charts this is a 15 minute chart 10 12 19 yesterday high 10 12 19 low this is the lowest pivot over here okay i've kept the line over here don't get confused by the trend line and this is today's trades so you know i'll explain the importance of pivots to you there are a lot of algo trading going on trading going on these days and every algo has got this you know regression and it's got all this uh, lot of mathematical funders they keep watching the highs and they keep watching the lows and they keep drawing the levels automatically okay now since you, you're watching the video here we you and me are obviously not on automatic uh, auto mode so we got to beat those guys at their games by using our native intelligence this is why drawing pivots are very important they can act as support and resistance and it can also these are trigger points pivots likewise you also need vwap right i'll come to vwap for example this is your trade setup you know once you get a stock suppose you're doing end of day analysis i assume that you will be working and you when you're home you'll be doing an analysis now you can't trade then you'll be trading the next day so like i mentioned to you just because that open interest data is bullish for the previous day doesn't mean you take an entry you always plot your vwap you plot three things one is vwap Second is your Fibonacci I just showed you, pivots over here. And then you also compare the futures price, you know. Whatever charting software you're using, add another price. In the, see this purple line, you know, this is the nifty futures line. So these pivots and all, you know, when, when, you, when you see, you will sometimes, you know, when over here, you know, you can see these two over here. Out here the cash is falling, but the futures have started rising over here. So this can give you a hint, you know, that something is up in the futures market, though the cash is here down in the dumps. This candle I'm talking about. See, see the divergence. This candle is down here and I mean the price has fallen over here. The futures market has started picking up. This is when the futures, this is how you got to do it over here too as well, you know. 
the futures market started picking up along with the so I, I will be explaining to you later how you correlate the futures market with the cash market that's a different thing you know right now this is your open interest now what you learned is how to analyze the open interest now i'll show you how to trade it but that's a separate video that's coming up tomorrow so thanks for watching and goodbye